Right here. I mean, you, you, you're obviously having success in Minnesota. What was it about Penn State? Yeah, I, w I was looking for a couple of things that were going to allow me to leave a situation that I was very comfortable with. You know, the, the first thing I was looking for was a head coach that I respected and that I thought could help me grow as a coach um, and that he had a great culture, a culture that I believed in, right? And so Coach Franklin met that criteria. Um, and then the other thing I was looking for is I really wanted to coach at a school where I felt like we had a legitimate chance to win a national championship. And when I looked at Penn State, uh, you know, they had been a top 10 team. Coach has done a great job of getting the team to that cusp, you know, where they had the, where they're going to be considered and talked about in August every year about the possibility of them being in the college football playoffs. And uh, so that was attractive to me. Um, and the other thing that I really loved about it too was that I felt like Coach has done a great job of getting the program there, but they hadn't done it in a little while. And to feel like I could be a part of something like that felt special to me. You know, and then the third thing obviously was the fact that I grew up uh, outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and grew up as a Penn State fan. And so a chance to come back and work at a school that I dreamed about possibly playing at someday, which I was not good enough to do. Um, but I, you know, it's really kind of a dream come true. I'm sure you've spent a lot of time recruiting uh, so far at Penn State, but for the next month or so, heading into spring practice, what are your goals with getting this offense to where it needs to be? Yeah, I, I think we've been working really hard. These guys will tell you that, that uh, we've been working really hard at that um, since we got off the road recruiting and, and building, uh, merging the two systems, right, uh, taking the things that, uh, I've noticed that they've already doing here, that they're doing it very well, that I think they would really complement and add to the system of what we had done at Minnesota. Ultimately, it's about uh, what do your players do best, right? What are their, uh, accentuate their strengths, limit their weaknesses, right? And that's something that I've always been able to do no matter where I've coached at. Um, and I'm excited about doing that here. And I love the talent that we have to work with here in doing that. How would you Frank, describe uh, it? James said that you, you haven't really had the element of a running quarterback in your system. Is that because of the quarterbacks you've had or because of your system? No, I, people, uh, most places I go to work, right away the recruiting guys want to talk to me about what am I looking for in a quarterback. And uh, I, always, I always tell them uh, I want a good one. You know, and they're like, uh, well, what, could you elaborate on that? And I'm like, no, I want a good one. Right, and you know we've always been able to build around the strengths of our players, right? With that, and so uh, if you went all the way back to when I was at the University of Delaware, I did have a running quarterback there, and he was pretty daggone good. He ended up being a six-round draft pick, so we did run him, incorporate the run game. But I just hadn't been around one in a while, and the game has evolved, right, since that time. So that's one of the things that I'm really excited about for me, from my own growth standpoint, is taking some of the things they've already done to take advantage of the strengths of their quarterback, right, and incorporate that into the system and make it even harder to defend. How would you describe yourself as a coach? What's your personality like? How do you kind of project that into your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, I, th I think that uh, off the field, I'm a pretty laid-back person, um, pretty easygoing. Uh, doesn't take me, it takes a lot to rattle me. Um, on the field, uh, I love what I do. I, I just love it, right? And I think that if you come and watch on the field, you'll be surprised um, at my energy and the excitement that I have for my job, right? I love working with these kids. I love helping them reach their fullest potential. Um, so I'm, 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 a, I'm a teacher and a communicator, right? And that's how I look at myself on, on the field. How well do you know? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. How well do you know Penn State's offensive personnel now? I mean, I'm sure it takes a while with so, so many different kids that you have to, you know, get to meet and learn their talent sets and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, I, I've been, I've had my iPad with me the whole time recruiting. So when I had any time I had any downtime, I was watching their film, right, of their season last year and trying to get a feel for, trying to get a head start on what do they do well. Um, what, how can we build this? What are we going to merge into this thing with them? Um, what are their weaknesses uh, with it? So I've been working on that, but really, you know, you really get a real feel for that as you go through spring ball, you know, and you really start working with them and ex communicating with them and explaining to them what you're looking for, 
and now you really get a really good chance to evaluate their skill sets. And I, I think that one of the things that I do every year, it doesn't matter where I'm coaching at, how many years I've been there, when spring ball is over, you know, and I look at the cut-ups from spring practice, I'm not really looking at the schemes or necessarily the mistakes. I'm looking at the skill sets. What, what came natural to them? What did they really grasp? What don't they understand? What might not be in their wheelhouse? Right, and what do we need to do moving forward? Kirk, what are your impressions initially of Sean Clifford? Yeah, I, I love Sean. Um, you know, I think when I got down to the Cotton Bowl, he was, I'm pretty sure he was the first guy that uh, I had a conversation with. Um, as soon as I got out of the car, they were coming out and he saw me and came over to introduce myself and we began to talk and uh, felt a real connection right away uh, with him. Um, very intelligent very hard worker, um, absolutely wants to be great, right? He wants to be great and he's willing to pay the price in order to accomplish that, right? So I'm really excited to work with him and help him realize his potential. Kirk, when you talk about you want a good one, when you talk about quarterbacks, is there a common thread in the good ones that you've coached? Yeah, I, I think that when you sit down and look at it, right, they've all been uh, accurate passers. Some have had stronger arms than others, right? They've all been uh, confident, decisive decision makers, right? Some of them were 4.0s, some of them were 2.5s, right? But they've all been confident, decisive decision makers, and they've all been leaders, right? Some of them, the difference is, some of them have been real tall, some of them have been shorter. Some of them have been really fast. Some of them, you wouldn't say running was their strong suit, right? Um, some of them were better in the pocket, some of them were better on the move. Kirk, uh, two, two things. What do you remember um, about the Penn State-Minnesota game this year? It was, it was obviously one of the, the better games in the Big Ten this year, but also after the game, Penn State's defenders talked about kind of how flummoxed they were by your version of the RPO. So what, what is it about your RPO? What are you looking for, and why was it so effective this year uh, for the Minnesota offense? Uh, well, first of all, we had good players. Right, and I've been doing this a long time. Um, and I've been in the penthouse and in the outhouse. And the common denominator, luckily I've been in the penthouse a lot more than the outhouse, but the common denominator was every time I've been in the penthouse, I've had really good players um, around me. Uh, so we had uh, really good players. Um, but I, I think it's, it's a system that, uh, that we've developed that fits and you know, it has answers. Um, and we know what the answers are, and we know how to move our pieces um, as the defensive people move their pieces and to put ourselves in the best possible situation uh, for our guys to execute, right? And so the, the, core, my, the core philosophies of uh, what I believe in that makes you a successful offense, right, have been with me for a long time, right? Uh, the actual plays, and that have evolved with time, right? And with the different players that I've had uh, the pleasure of working with. But I've been blessed. I've had been around a lot of good offenses, and conversely, I've been around a lot of really good players that are willing to work really hard and pay the price on a daily basis. One of the keys in that game was the play of your wide receivers. What have you seen from Penn State's wide receivers since you got here? Because James really just said that's one area where the team needs to improve. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, in today's day and age in offensive football, right, um, you know, you've got to have guys out there that can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups and, and win those 50, instead of it being a 50-50 ball, it's more like a 75-25 ball when that ball comes up there. So it's a really important position for us to develop. Um, I, I like the skill sets and the guys that we have there, uh, but we, we got to go to work and, and we got to develop. I love... Uh, we just had our first winter workout the other day, and the quarterbacks were in that group with the wideout. And you know, just from a standpoint of just watching them work, I love the way they worked, right? And and to me, that's always that's a great starting point for everything, right? When you have that work ethic, if you take that work ethic and talent, right, and the ability to learn, you know, that's a recipe for success with it. Did you have any hesitation about changing schools within the same conference? And what about James specifically made you think you could grow here alongside the program? Yeah, uh, when it when 
when James actually offered me the job, there was no hesitancy at that point, right? Um, you know, I had thought about it for a while, um, and I was, he just met that criteria. I'm not one of those people that makes rash decisions. You know, we had had a lot of success at Minnesota. Um, you know, so it wasn't uh, like the first phone call I'd ever gotten um, about possibly leaving there. Uh, so I had already had these type of conversations in my own head with my wife um, and we knew exactly what we were looking for and when he called um, it was something that I had really strong interest in and after we had some conversations together uh, I knew that philosophically we were aligned because really it all starts there right if philosophically you're not aligned with your head coach um, it's just, it's probably not going to work, right? And I don't think that works any different than any other job, right? With the people that you work with, you want to be aligned philosophically. So um, I knew that and com having conversations with them. And then the, the thing about James was um, we knew of each other, but we didn't know, know each other. Before the Penn State Minnesota game, we shook hands and said hello. And, he said so-and-so said hello, said to make sure we said hi, and I said yeah, so-and-so said to make sure I said hi, and we laughed, and then we walked and went our own separate ways. Um, but I, I have some people that knew him very well, and um, so I didn't have any questions about him as a person, right? Um, for me, at my age, you know, I wanted to make sure that um, if I took another job that I was comfortable with who my boss was and how I was going to grow as a coach and that he was going to be a quality person and have the type of culture that I wanted. And so uh, as far as a football coach, right, I had watched James for a while. So I had seen him, I had seen his career go along. Um, you know, I'd watched him be, become a great receivers coach. Then I watched him earn his next opportunity from being a great receivers coach to have an opportunity to be a coordinator. I watched him be successful at that job, then watched him get another coordinator job and be successful. And then he had a, because he's an East Coast guy too, so you're following each other's careers a little bit, even though you're not getting together for going out to dinner, right? Um, then I watched him, what he did at Vanderbilt. So his track record, his actions have told, had told me that he's a great football coach. Um, and then what he had done here, um, you know, how he had raised the level of the program and really had taken over a program that, you know, had a proud history, but there was a little bit of a drop off there and has rebuilt it to, to the point where they're in the conversation for the college football playoffs now. So that part was easy.